Let's turn now to Matteo Garavoglia, uh, who is in Berlin. He's a research associate uh, in the Center for International Studies at the University of Oxford. Matteo, thank you very much for your time. Now, tell us how Georgia Meloni and her right-wing coalition rose to such prominence and so quickly. In many respects, what we're witnessing right now with Georgia Meloni is what we've been witnessing a few years ago with the Five Star Movement and with the League. Italians uh, give it a shot by trying to put into government the only political party they have not yet had in government. So this should not be viewed so much as a vote for Georgia Meloni and her party, Brothers of Italy, but rather as, 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 a, as an attempt uh, on behalf of many extremely disaffected, disaffected Italians with the, with the political system to give it a shot to, some, to have somebody new. Uh, in government. So it's a rejection of anti-establishment politics, would you say? W very much so. Now, Hillary Clinton said to an Italian journalist earlier this month, the election of the first woman prime minister in a country always represents a break with the past, and that is certainly a good thing. But many associate uh, a, a, Maloney, a Maloney win with the fascist movement led by Benito Mussolini. Uh, can you tell us, how do Italians measure the significance of what this win means, perhaps, for women, and also the politics that she stands for? Well, interestingly enough, uh, Giorgio Meloni has never uh, worked hard or made much of a deal of um, issues pertaining to gender equality, for instance. Uh, quite the opposite. She stands for an extremely traditional understanding of, of feminist politics herself, uh, in that respect, can be seen almost as, as an exception within her, her own party, which is, in terms of policies and, and party culture, extremely misogynous and old-fashioned in that respect. So, and, and interestingly enough, the, the, the gender card was not one that was played much or discussed as much one would have expected throughout the electoral campaign either. So just drawing on that a little bit more, there are political similarities with, say, uh, Maloney and Marine Le Pen from France, the leader of the National Front. Uh, but political scientists describe both leaders as examples of what they call gender washing, when female politicians adopt a non-threatening image to blunt the force of their extremism. Has Maloney softened the image of the Brothers Movement and made her more popular, do you think? She, she certainly, um, she certainly has uh, strived both uh, to present herself uh, on the international stage as somebody who is not uh, closely associated with with, with a fascist uh, past of Italy, and at the same time within Italy itself, she has strived not to 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 be perceived as as a direct heir to 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 Mussolini's movement. Um, however, when you look at uh, some of the policies that have been that are that are pursued and, and proposed by Brothers of Italy, ranging from anything um, economic policies to social policies and 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 cultural policies, well, you cannot avoid uh, having the impression that we're still looking at what, in many respects, is a is a rather uh, nationalistic uh, outlook and rather con on, on, on politics and a rather conservative outlook on social issues. So what do you think this means for Italy now? She's worked hard to soften her image, emphasizing her support for Ukraine and diluting anti-EU rhetoric. But how might things change if when she is in office? You know, what should Italy and the EU expect from her, do you think? Well, the EU is extremely wary of the situation in the sense that the track record of, of not only Giorgio Meloni, but over uh, two key parties in government that will, will join in government, Silvio Berlusconi uh, and Matteo Salvini, is one of uh, the ranges from populism to anti-Europeanism to uh, nationalism. So in Brussels, uh, people are certainly worried. Now, I think what will be interesting, two things that we'll have to watch is, one, how Giorgia Meloni will manage the relationship with Silvio Berlusconi and Matteo Salvini, her part, key partners in government, given the fact that she, if the opinion polls are correct, she will be extremely strong vis-a-vis uh, -vis them within government. Her party alone will have more than the votes of Matteo Salvini and Silvio Berlusconi's parties combined. So there is some interesting internal politics within the within the right-wing alliance that we'll have to look for. 
The second thing we'll have to, to keep an eye on will be a choice, I believe, that Giorgia Meloni will have to make over the next few months, whether she will uh, go towards the route of, of Viktor Orban of Hungary, becoming some sort of uh, Mediterranean uh, Viktor Orban of sorts, or whether she decides to, to look at Margaret Thatcher as her example and, and maybe become rather uh, neoliberal in economic terms, but, but still aiming to, to, to fly a bit higher uh, regardless of her policies and not going down the Victor Orban route. This is something that she will have to, to sort out fairly quickly. All right, Matteo, thank you very much for your time. Matteo Garavoglia, uh, associates, a research associate at the Centre for International Studies at the University of Oxford.